This is the Harbor Freight Scissor Lift. I ordered this when a 25% sale came up, and I've really been wanting one of these. I think it'll work great in my shop, but I do want to show you guys some of the videos so you can see just how large it really is. This is a traditional eight foot bed, and this will not fit all the way forward with the tailgate up. It's actually back a few inches, but regardless, it's a little bit longer than eight feet, and it's pretty much four feet wide. Everything is jammed in this crate in this little box up here. Now the first thing I notice is this box is beat to all heck and back and quite honestly all of the other reviews that I found, there's not a lot, there's a few reviews online, talk about this box being beat up when they got it and uh, mine was too. The actual unit itself weighs a lot. This was freighted and I did coordinate meeting the driver and my original plans was to slide this off his truck into mine. Now freight trucks sit a little taller so they didn't quite line up and quite honestly this thing is so heavy it, it was just barely manageable by three relatively strong guys and uh, we struggled and, and we finally got it on here but it was pretty much everything we could do just to move this from his truck to this truck and we did have a pallet jack it's just so long the one end wants to fall down and, and you know lay on the ground the pallet jack can't seem to pick that end up and it's everything a couple of guys can do just to lift the one end so they're very heavy keep that in mind if you have one of these shipped to your house at the very least you're going to need a lift gate and a couple of big guys to, to manhandle handle this around. Getting it off the truck by myself was a whole other story. However, I was able to use the little cherry picker bolted to the three point on my tractor and I was able to kind of manage it and get it off by myself. The one thing everybody complains about is the pump assembly gets beat up in the shipping. As you can see, the box is pretty beat up. And the shipper actually told me, if you want to decline it, you absolutely can. This is how we got it. And I said, no, I actually expected this pump to be a little beat up. And I figured I would just make it work, which is pretty much what everybody else does. Why Harbor Freight can't seem to figure out how to package these so they don't get beat up. I don't know. I'm sure it's not really Harbor Freight's problem. It's probably the people they order it from because you know Harbor Freight is not making these. Some overseas company is. That being said, I was scathed with just a little few minor issues that are not going to be a big deal. The, uh, the cover on the capacitor is just kind of bent a little bit and just needs straightened out and bolted back down again. Uh, the wheel on the bottom is completely busted. Not a big deal. I can come up with a wheel. The one thing that surprised me is it's gotten wet. You can see some rust down in here. And if you look at the front, you can see some rust up here. Again, it's actually unacceptable for any company to deliver an item like this, but it is Harbor Freight. It was cheap. We're just going to deal with it. So I went down to the hardware store and I bought a couple of steel wheels. They fit on. I did have to take the lathe and kind of uh, shorten the shoulders up on them, clean them up a bit. They fit fine and it does allow me to move this whole contraption around, albeit it's a bit difficult. We'll talk about that later. It's been a few days since I've actually been able to spend some time and set this unit up. I do have it in the garage orientated in the right direction. And I will say that I have it kind of temporary wired into 220. As you can see, I did buy some decent quality hydraulic fluid for it. And let's test it out. Now, I do know there's a problem, but I want you guys to watch it. And maybe you can listen and hear what's going on. So the way this works is there is a push button and then there is a valve the valve is just kind of a relief valve that lets it down push button turns it on and pumps it up it's not very loud everything is relatively smooth going so far so good and right there it's sucking air so my guess is there's probably some type of pickup tube that is supposed to go all the way to the bottom of this container and it's either bent or has a hole in it or something and we're picking up air. Now when I lean this back, I can actually get it to pick up more. So now I have to take this apart and fix yet another problem. So four bolts takes the tank off and the pump actually sits on the top hangs from this motor up here and what I found was this piece here which is supposed to be coupled right here was actually laying in the bottom of the tank so we were only picking up at this high which is probably just a little bit under the fluid level and once the machine would pick up a little bit it started sucking air which we could hear and that's why it couldn't pick up
That was literally just a uh, compression style fitting. It had a little ferrule in it. And uh, what kind of makes me laugh a little bit is the ferrule hadn't been crushed. So either somebody didn't torque the nut down properly and it just slid out over time or they forgot to tighten the nut down. So anyhow, it was just a matter of putting it back together and tightening the nut down. It should be good to go now. We'll put it all together and give it another test. Okay, everything's back together, and let's give this a shot and see how well it works. And it sounds really smooth, and it's fairly quiet. And I believe we're past where we were before. That clicking is the safety mechanism right there that it's falling into the grooves. Okay, that's it. Fully extended position. The deck height, as you can see, is just a little bit above 52 inches. And the height to the bottom of the pad is right around 55 and a half inches high. So almost four feet. That's not bad. As with all lifts, this lift does have a locking mechanism. It is controlled by what appears to be a brake handle from a bicycle. And what it does is it drops a pretty hefty hunk of metal down in these slots, which prevents it from falling down just like a jack stand. Now there are seven positions that was kind of important to me because what I really want to do with this table or this lift is to lower it to table height and make a maybe a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood or something maybe an aluminum top or something to lay on top of it so I can use it in my garage as a work table when I'm not using it as a lift. Letting it down is very very slow at least without a car on it. And we'll put a car on it here in a little bit and see how well it lifts it. You can see I'm lighting it down and it is very slow. That's probably okay. Good safety factor, I would imagine. As with most of these scissor lifts, there's these kind of articulating arms that pivot in kind of a lot of different directions and they slide and the pads slide in and out. Just, just makes it a little easier to find a spot under your car, a lift point, so to speak, to lift it safely. Now I've seen a lot of people test this lift out with smaller vehicles. This is a full size car. It's a town car. It does have a full frame. And I will say that the clearance was still a little tight. There was pretty much only about a quarter inch to spare between the top of the jack and the bottom of the car. Now the town car does sit relatively low <laughs> compared to older town cars. But I imagine if you had a newer vehicle that sat pretty low, you might have to drive it upon some planks. Now I did see one video where a guy laid two by sixes on each side he drove the car on top of the tuba sixes and that gave him the clearance he needed uh, but first glance is it's pretty tight even for a town car now let's go ahead and lift this car and see how well it does so how do they say it no guts no glory well let's see how strong these welds are Okay, not bad. The pump really didn't seem to have any trouble. The motor sounded pretty smooth and it has lifted the car quite a bit. Now I have a nine foot ceiling and I have some garage doors and stuff in the way. There is workarounds. Maybe we will take care of that in another video, but you can pretty much move all this stuff out of the way, recess the lighting and pick up another couple feet. Uh, but I think this is actually gonna be plenty for what I need to do. Now to give you a reference, we have the frame about three feet off the ground. I do have right around nine foot ceilings, they're just shy of nine feet. And you can see with the garage door, 
uh, I was still able to lift the car three feet in the air. Now, that being said, you can remove some of the stuff. You can uh, basically do a roll-up garage door or even to get rid of, of the uh, bar here, get the car in the garage and lower the door. That'll get you in between the door. You can recess the lighting, and instead of doing a ceiling mount garage door opener, you can definitely do a wall mount garage door opener which will clear up the ceiling maybe in a future video we'll do something like that so like and subscribe but for now i think 36 inches is quite a bit and that will make this car a whole lot easier to work on so i'm pretty pleased that this lift can lift this car without any issues now let's go ahead and let the car down it does go down a little bit faster with a lot of weight on it and that was to be expected Now, I don't know how well you can tell by this picture, but again, this is a town car. I do feel they sit higher than most cars, not quite as high as the older town cars, but you can see there's just not a lot of space in between the top of this lift and the lift. So the lift is a little thicker than I'd like to see. Other than that, it does lift this car just fine, and the car does clear it, albeit tight. To move it around your garage, one end has a set of metal wheels, and you are supposed to use the motor pump assembly as a dolly to pick up this lift point here and then you can push it around theoretically now that being said it's very tough to maneuver this around you can do it but it is tough it's not something you really want to do all the time so my intention is just to leave it where it is and again i'm going to put some type of tabletop on it and use it as a table unless i need a car on so i'll take the table off and drive the car on now the bottom line, and I'm sure everybody's asking him this, is it worth the money? Well, I'm going to say that I had a 25% coupon off, which took $400 right off the top. That made it extremely competitive, and actually I couldn't find another lift this cheap on the market. So price rise, it is pretty cheap, and it does do its job. That being said, I had a problem with this. And if you do a little bit digging around, a lot of people end up with problems with these. They're mainly shipping related. Sometimes this is busted. Sometimes the switch is busted off. The capacitor is knocked off. And as we've seen with mine, the pickup tube had fallen off into the tub. So I had to take it apart and fix that. Um, and then also the top was beat up a little bit on the capacitor cover. And I was able to fix it. One of the wheel was broken. So I had to put another wheel on it. I didn't put a lot of money into it. A little bit of time. So... I'm going to say, yeah, it's worth it, but I do think Harbor Freight could do a better job packaging, specifically this guy up. I myself am pleased with the purchase. The welds look really good on my particular unit. But that being said, if you look online, you look at some of the other people's lifts, their welds can be a little sketchy. I wasn't concerned about it. I would just weld them back up if it was me. But if you're not comfortable with welding, you certainly don't want to do that. You should be able to rely on the manufacturer's welds. Now, the bottom line is, if you could get this shipped to your residence and it was in working order, absolutely it appears to be worth it. However, in my case, I had to do a little DIY, And if you're a do-it-yourself type person such as mine, it's still probably well worth the money. But if you need something fast, you need it to work right away, you need it to work out of the box... You should probably look for a different company and you're probably going to have to pay a little bit more. That's pretty much all I got for this review. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. I do do a lot of build-it-yourself type videos. I make a lot of cool gadgets and things, so take a look at my channel. You might find a video you yourself might like or want to build. And please, like and subscribe.